All right, this lesson is a bit more intense than most, so take your time and go through this carefully. If there's any part of the previous lessons that you're still stuck on, please go back and re-watch that material um, because you will need everything you've learned up until now to understand this lesson. So in the previous lesson, we learned how to calculate the maximum values that can be stored in a set number of bits. For example, we learned that if given 16 bits of storage space, which is 2 bytes, the highest integer number that can be stored is 65,535, which is 2 to the power of 16 minus 1. Here, I want to expand on this a bit more. Let's consider that we still have two bytes to work with, 16 bits, but we want to store both positive and negative numbers. You should remember from previous lessons that this means we need to have a sign bit. The purpose of this lesson is to show you how to calculate the minimum and maximum values for signed integers. You should remember from previous lessons that using a sign bit cuts in half the total numbers that can be represented. But you are now able to count in two directions, positive and negative. Let's examine the situation when we have four bits to work with and one of those bits is a sign bit. Remember from the previous lesson that the total number of possibilities that can be stored in four bits is 16 total possibilities. If we were to use one of those bits as a sign bit, we now allow for two sets of eight possibilities, one set positive and the other set negative. If you need any review on this concept, uh, review the lesson on the sign bit and feel free to ask any questions you need to. If you remember from the lesson on the sign bit, we had a curious situation. We had a positive zero and a negative zero. This is not very efficient since we are wasting a value, since we only need to represent zero in one way. So this is the table that I showed you in that lesson, where we start at zero and we count to seven and then we do it again with negative numbers, again starting at zero and counting to negative seven. If we choose to not use zero twice, then that frees up an extra value that we can use. We could set this extra value to anything we want. If we wanted to, we could set it to negative eight, and then our method would make it possible to show all the numbers from negative eight through positive seven. Also, this makes sense because for the extra value the sign bit is already set to indicate that this is a negative number. Of course this creates problems if you want to easily be able to add or subtract or perform other mathematical operations using the system but we will get to that later. The exact mechanism by which this is done is still outside of the scope of this lesson and the example I'm showing you here is for demonstrative purposes only. So I want you to remember the idea here is that you have zero and then you effectively have negative zero and so what we're saying is since we already have zero once we're going to do something different with this value and because this bit which if you remember is the sign bit since it's already set to one then what we're going to do is we're going to make this number negative, which means now that we have a total of seven positive numbers, not including zero, and we'll have a total of eight negative numbers, because this isn't going to be zero, we're going to make it something else. Keep in mind that we will have exactly half of our values have the sign bit set to zero and exactly half of the values have the sign bit set to one. However, one of the values where the sign bit is set to zero is going to be zero. 
and the corresponding value where the sine bit is set to 1 is not going to be 0 because setting it to 0 would be effectively wasting a value. We want to use that value for something else. So let me show you a table that makes this more clear. With any number of bits, you're going to always start with 0, which is setting every bit to 0. And then you count 1, 2, and so on until you have filled up every single bit except the sign bit, which is going to stay 0 to indicate that it is a positive number. When the sign bit is not 0, when the sign bit is set to 1, then you're going to have negative numbers. So the question that we need to answer is how many total positive numbers and how many total negative numbers? And this is how it works. Remember that exactly half of the values are going to have the sign bit set to zero and exactly half the values are going to have the sign bit set to one. However, one of the values when the sign bit is set to zero is the number zero. So let's look at it a different way. If we have a total number of possibilities, which we're going to call t for the total number of possibilities, then the total number of possibilities where the sign bit is set to zero is going to be exactly one half of t. The total number of possibilities where the sign bit is set to one is also going to be one half of t. Now of course another way of, of saying one half of t is just to say t divided by two except in the case of positive numbers we're going to subtract one because we have the value zero to consider so the total number of positive numbers you can have is going to be t divided by two minus one whereas the total number of negative numbers that you can have is going to be t divided by two All right, so for signed integer values, the maximum value for positive numbers is going to be the total number of possibilities divided by two and then subtract one in order to account for zero. Another way of saying the total number of possibilities is saying two to the power of n where n is the number of bits. For example, if you have four bits, then that would be two to the power of four, which is 16. Half of 16 would give us eight, and then eight minus one gives us seven. And so the greatest number that we can store in four bits, if it is a signed value for positive numbers, is the number seven. For negative numbers, the minimum value is the total number of possibilities divided by two, but make that into a negative number. And another way of saying that is, of course, the total number of possibilities divided by negative two. And another way of saying that, because the total number of possibilities is two to the power of n, where n is the number of bits, you could just simply say two to the power of n divided by negative two will give you your lowest possible negative number. All right, so let's look at this example when we have 16 bits, which is two bytes. That means we have 65,536 total possibilities, of which half of those possibilities, meaning 32,768, will have the sign bit set to zero, and half of those possibilities will have the sign bit set to one. So in order to figure out the maximum and minimum values in this case, we simply take 
half of the total number of possibilities and subtract one in order to get the highest possible positive number, and we simply take half of these possibilities and make it into a negative number in order to know the minimum number. At this point, given any number of bits, you should be able to know how to calculate the total number of possibilities, the highest possible positive number if it is signed or unsigned, and the lowest possible negative number if it is signed.